Hey everybody, Jessica, Pretty Prints and Paper, and I am so excited to be talking to you today about the new bullet journal notebooks. Writer has been working on a second edition for quite a while and has gone through several iterations in order to get to this point. And I am so pumped to show you the first kind of glance as to what these notebooks look like. Um, there are two colors that he sent me. One is black and one is this beautiful blush color. And I wanted to film just a really quick first impression before I could totally tear through and take apart all these um, the packaging in order to dive in. So stay tuned for a giveaway. Here we go. I opened up the blush one first and there are some key things that I noticed right away is that it's pretty hefty notebook. It weighs a little bit more than other ones that I've been used to. That's how you know that there's a little more additional weight in the pages as well. Some of the key features have changed and updated over the years and there are some specific bullet journal tools and details in here. So if anybody is ever wondering how to get started bullet journaling, there is a guide inside. The paper has been upgraded to 120 GSM, which is really exciting for people like me because that was one of the reasons why I kind of went away from using it. The smart grid is one of my favorite features. I'll show you that in a moment. The pocket, um, the pocket guide, and then of course we still have the lying flat. There's three bookmarks instead of two. There's 206 pages. I think that's a little bit less than there might've been before. And then um, I love that they added the sustainably sourced. I don't, I have to look more into what that means, but love that they added it. All right. Even this little jacket is beautiful. So opening this up, I've, this is the obviously the first time I've open it up. So inside, of course, their classic thank you card, invitation to join the writer's club. I love how this notebook has like a user manual. There are going to be some really cute and really intentional choices that writer made to make this edition even more powerful of a tool. Um, inside, some information about the app, bulletjournal.com. There's going to be way more stuff added to the bulletjournal.com. This, so many people have included this in their regular bullet journals, like the measurements and the dots and stuff, and now it's already built into the cover. And I love that it's this classy bronze foiling so that it kind of uh, doesn't look like a messy, just like chart in the front, but it, a, a classy addition. So you can see how many dots are down halfway, a fourth, a third, etc. And one of writer's most prized things about the bullet journal is the purpose-driven piece about it. So I love that it has this in the front to kind of anchor all of us in there's this overlap between what and why. Okay. Oh, the pages are so smooth. Got that key in the front with some room, of course, to add your own flair. Intentions. I love that. This is in the front. This is something that I do every time I start a notebook is I in anchor myself with my goal right in the front. Usually that's like one little word. Maybe it'll be goals, whatever it is for you. And the index is much more open than the chart that it used to have. So now it's just marked index. The paper, oh my gosh, it feels so good. Future log is now just open. That's really, really cool. Giving a lot more flexibility. Okay, and this is when you get into the pages. You can't maybe see this, but on the bottom, it's really, really light. What I appreciate about this notebook is that the dots are not super dark. So it's really light, and on the bottom is the page number, right in the middle. And I actually, you can see on the bottom here, the little smart dot grid, the three dots for thirds, the two dots for a half, and so on. And it has it on the long side too, but on the inside. So a third, half, a third. So you still have the page numbers, which could be harder for people to see if they're used to seeing it on the corner, but I like that it makes room for these dots. It looks so classy. And in the blush colored one, the three bookmarks. Are so those are all the pages. And then toward the back, we have the pocket guide. Oh, this jacket is just, it's got so much good stuff in it. It's, 
That's awesome. If you haven't read the book, you should absolutely read the book. The stickers still come with it. Wow, this is an upgrade. Now you can add these stickers in. It's got the months in this beautiful classy foil. And then it has these charts, which I think are for your monthly logs or monthly when you go on the side and you're marking the dates. Oh my God, that's so cool. And then you have the numbers for the side, I, I assume will be from the month log. Oh, that's really cool. Here's this beautiful pocket guide, slides right into the pocket. It's a nice little insert. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. Thick cardstock that talks about how to set this up. Oh, this is stunning. So if you ever are wondering what the basics are, people think that the bullet journal is all about those really artsy layouts. And it can be. I think that's so liberating when you know that that's what speaks to you. But this goes back to the original intent that writers set, which was around using this as a tool to make your life better, more productive. Until I read the book again, I did not remember just how much that you could do with all of the reflections so I love that he's added these in here so here that is um, this will fit right back into this little pocket oh so slick of course you can take it out if you want a little bit more room Okay, so the pen test turns out all right. This is better than the old paper GSM for sure. And you can just see kind of the ghosting on the back, the marker, the Crayola marker, the mild liner here, the Pentel brush pen. There is definitely some ghosting here, but actually I can deal with this as long as I can, you know, write over it on the old paper you'd be able to see right through it and I wouldn't be able to kind of use the back page. So this is a definite improvement and into kind of a level that I would actually be able to use it depending on how much marker was on the other side. So totally up to you. Ghosting does not bother everyone. So that is kind of your call, but that's how much it's showing through the back. Wow, I am so excited to use okay, this. So it's been a couple weeks since I've been using that new bullet journal and let me tell you how it's been going. It lives inside of my agenda cover from Goldmine and Coco and that is working out pretty well. And let me flip through and show you how I've been using it. I think eventually I'm gonna, you know, sit down and fill out my intentions. I just wanna get clear on them for the new year so that's still blank. The index I've used for five seconds of my entire six year journey with the bullet journal, but maybe I started using it as just a little bit of a catch all. All right, so I always begin with like my word of the year and this year it's been trust. I have written on the back side, and there is, you can see some shadows that, okay, I wrote on the other side, but honestly, way not noticeable compared to the past work term versions. Um, these are some of my lessons from 2020. I'm using a passion planner marker and a standard Tombow Fudenosuke and a 0.28 millimeter pen. So this is a, a gel pen, very thin. It's not super juicy, like a big thick 0.7. So that might be something that impacts how you experience it. But I love the paper. Just started writing in it, my weekly reflection. And I used to have to skip pages in the old versions of this notebook because it would, you would just see it so clearly on the other side, but I don't have that problem so far. I've been using some stickers to coordinate with my weekly and my passion planner. 
So it kind of creates a fun, like cohesive look between my weekly overview in the passion planner and then in my day to day. And, you know, just taking notes, making some quotes here and I can see a little bit of it on the other side, but it's not very noticeable. This is one version of my daily where I keep track of my energy and my any symptoms or physical feelings on the left hand side and then my tasks on the right. So a lot of the passion planner marker for the headers. But you can see that like nothing, I haven't had to skip pages yet. You can't see through too much on the back sides. And here's where I started using some watercolor because that's what I used to use in my old Loic term and I couldn't anymore in the Archer and Olive. If you've ever invested in the Archer and Olive notebook, you know the paper's super thick. It's really great for gouache or acrylic paint, but it's not great for watercolor. It just soaks it right in. So I was really excited to see how this worked on the new paper and it warps it a little bit, you know, buckles it if you use too much water. So this one has less water, this one has a little more water, and you can feel a little bit of the difference on the back, but you can't really see it. That's what is so exciting. Like there's a little bit more color here, so you see the buckling and a little bit of the shadow here, but you can't really see it. I am in love. So there's so much more left to go. The it, Getting used to the kind of off-white again with the paper is a little different because Archer and Olive is really, really white. So that's like the only kind of thing where I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I, I switched that up. But using that smart grid is super nice. You can just see like, oh, I can quick divide my paper into thirds. Um, the bookmarks I kind of use, don't really use depending on the time. And I haven't found a reason to use these yet with the with the stickers. But I mean, when, when I start to move into the 2021 uh, setup, I think that will be really, really great. So I this might make me go back to using the Lorg term now that I've used it for a little bit here. The pages are just thick enough. They, they aren't as thick as the Archer and Olive, but I actually kind of like that you can flip through and it still gives you that like page turning a little bit used feeling, but it's not as flimsy and thin as the last. So that has been my experience so far. I'm not a fountain pen user, so I couldn't tell you really what the what that experience is like. I tried to find my old ones, but couldn't. So, I mean, I highly recommend it. I'm definitely going to get some more of this. This is going to be the 2021 color. I'm excited to see what 2022 colors are. There's going to be one limited edition color every year. So, this might convert me back. What questions do you have? Are you thinking about getting one for yourself? I know that people are already thinking about or already have their 2021 bullet journal. So let me know down below what you think and I'll get back to you. But if you like it, go ahead and like, subscribe, share, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.